Assalamu alaikum. We will talk today about the use of epidemic curve in outbreak. So this lecture will cover the epidemic curve, steps of making uh, an epidemic curve, uh, advantage of epidemic curve, determining the exact period of outbreak or period of exposure or incubation period, epidemic patterns, and determining the epidemic patterns of the outbreak. So how, how we do the epidemic curve? So we uh, make a graph of number of cases uh, versus the time of onset of the disease. So you have y-axis and x-axis. For the y-axis, you add the number of cases, the, uh, the bars that we see here, and on the x-axis, you put the time. The time can be days, can be weeks, can be months, uh, and so on. So this is the epidemic curve. This slide show the steps for making an epidemic curve. And as we said, you have y-axis and x-axis. In the x-axis, you put uh, the time. You start by uh, 1, uh, for example, um, or the actual date. Uh, say the outbreak happened in, in March, 15 March. So, you, so your first uh, time would be March 15. You can make March 16, 17. Or if the outbreak is uh, for long time uh, and has a big number of people, so you can make it weekly. Uh, outbreak like uh, COVID, we can make it monthly. So the time would depend on how long is the outbreak. Uh, you may start at the beginning with days, then you change it to weeks or month. Uh, for the number, uh, as we, uh, uh, again, this similar to the x-axis, if the number is so big, you can uh, you can add whatever number, like each box represents one case or 10 cases or 100 cases. It depends on the uh, number of the output. Um, so you adding uh, day by day the number of cases as you go until you see uh, you need to change uh, the the unit of y axis or x axis depends on how large the outbreak as we as we said an epidemic curve has many advantage uh, first it can determine the exact period of exposure yani when exposure happened and uh, also, the probable period of exposure, uh, the probable incubation period, uh, and the pattern of the outbreak, and when combined with other information during the investigation of the outbreak, it can help to identify the possible exposure. So, uh, we will explain each one of these advantages in the next slides. So, for determining the exact period of outbreak, so simply you plot the um, epidemic curve and it has a start peak and end so the epidemic curve uh, as we as we show you in the previous slide uh, start which is the first date of outbreak end the last date of outbreak and the peak is the highest number of cases during uh, the outbreak the magnitude of outbreak can be assessed easily just looking at the epidemic curve. So if you show the epidemic curve to anybody and uh, you put the uh, the number of cases uh, on each bar, they will determine the magnitude. Is it a small outbreak, uh, five, six patients, well, uh, large outbreak has hundreds of people and so on. The time trend, the distribution of cases over time will give you an indication of where the outbreak uh, is in its course. So, uh, for example, if you are drawing the outbreak uh, and you still didn't get the beak yet, so you know you have you still have time until the outbreak uh, finish. Uh, as you know, uh, there is uh, upward slope, then downward slope. So, are you in the upward slope or the downward uh, slope? Also, after the curve go down. Uh, and you are approaching the end of the outbreak, you may find another case that uh, that uh, detect that is detected um, after the end of the outbreak. You may ha you may have this outliers after the end of the outbreak until there is no other cases. 
So for uh, the advantage of determining the exact period of outbreak, as we see here, the outbreak extend between 20 October, uh, 20 October and up for 30 days until 19 uh, November. Uh, and the peak is in uh, October uh, 30. And this is what does it mean uh, exact period of outbreak. So very easy and very descriptive for uh, uh, the outbreak in terms of how many and when. So as you as you know, uh, in epidemiology, we describe the place, time, and person. This would describe for you the time and person. So for determining the probable period of exposure of incubation period, we will give you an example of uh, a common source outbreak. Uh, and we know the cost of agent of this outbreak. And what we want to determine is the probable period of exposure. So what you need to do uh, to determine the start of outbreak, end of outbreak, and uh, the peak of outbreak. The, uh, the start would be the minimum uh, period of exposure. The end would be the maximum period of exposure. The peak would be the median uh, exposure. So if you, uh, if you have an outbreak with non-organism, you can determine the probable period of exposure. And the next slide will show an example of that. Here we have um, out, uh, outbreak, common source. Uh, the cause is hepatitis A. So what you need to do is to go to uh, literature and find out uh, what is the incubation period of hepatitis A. And from the literature, you will know that it ranges between 15 and 50 days with an average four weeks. Uh, so uh, what you need to do here is to, uh, to consider the first, the start of the outbreak is the minimum and the end of the outbreak is the maximum and the peak of the outbreak of the average. So this is 15 days, as we said, this is 50 days and this is four weeks. So we will see the three items um, end at some point. Uh, this some point is the probable period of exposure. So using the common source um, uh, epidemic curve, uh, using the minimum, maximum, and average uh, incubation period from the literature, we can go back and find out the probable period of exposure. Uh, uh, determining the probable incubation period, it is the opposite. When you have a uh, common source outbreak and you want to determine uh, the incubation period, uh, if exposure is known, here we know the exposure, but we don't know the organism. So what we can do is we can, from the exposure to the start would be the minimum incubation period, from the exposure to the end would be the maximum incubation period, from the exposure to the peak would be the average incubation period. So if we count this, we'll find 15, 50, the maximum, and the average is four weeks. And from the literature, we will know that most probably this is a hepatitis A. This is, uh, of course, uh, the incubation period is repeated between different organisms, but at least it will give you some hint about probable exposure it's a GIT outbreak and uh, it is uh, the average is four weeks so probably this is a hepatitis A and you can exclude some other organism that have shorter incubation period or longer incubation period so it can help you it's not the only single item that uh, can determine the incubation uh, period uh, but it can help you doing that another benefit of the epidemic curve is to uh, determine the pattern of outbreak so is your outbreak common source? What does it mean common source? Exposed to the same infectious agent or toxin. Yani all patients in the outbreak were exposed to the same source. That's why it's called common source. The other one is propagated, means that uh, they are uh, exposed, some of the patients in this uh, outbreak exposed to the uh, one source or common source. Then they start to infect, infect other people so it is propagated, so from um, uh, patient to patient uh, exposure uh, after the first common source or a start of the outbreak. These are the two common uh, types, common source and propagated. But also sometimes we have 
diseases that can start to uh, uh, common source and then become propagated. We have also other patterns, uh, but the main uh, two patterns of uh, uh, outbreaks than the, that the uh, epidemic curve can determine are the common source and propagated. The common source can be subdivided into point, means point one point in the time. Continuous means the exposure is continuous for the same uh, agent, like you are exposed to uh, uh, contaminated water in a water tank, for example, or intermittent come at some time and disappear at some time. So point means it's one event. Continuous means uh, uh, multiple con uh, consecutive days or, or weeks uh, of exposure to the same contaminated source or the same source of uh, infectious agent. Intermittent means uh, it is um, uh, sometimes uh, apparent, sometimes it disappear. And here we, in this slide, we have uh, the differences between common source and propagated, as we said. Common source or cases have the same origin. They are exposed to the same uh, source. Propagated cases cannot be attributed to a single origin because there is patient to patient. So each patient infect another person, one or more persons. Um, so uh, person to person transmission is present and propagated, but it's not present in common source because all patients get the, the, the disease or infection from the same uh, source. A number of cases in common source usually small because it's a single event usually. Sometimes it is uh, big when there is uh, source contamination like water tanks or something like that. Propagated usually larger in size. Why? Because patients infect others and according to the type of organism, uh, each patient can infect one, two, three or more. As, uh, as we know, something called uh, R0. It, de it, it determines how many cases uh, can catch the disease from a single patient uh, who have the disease. Uh, a period of, uh, of outbreak in the common source is usually short, but propagated course is usually longer. Uh, example of common source, waterborne Legionella associated VAB outbreak and ICU. So you have uh, uh, water source have Legionella and uh, the vapor of this Legionella uh, uh, inspirated by patients in the ICU. So they get uh, pneumonia caused by this Legionella uh, organism. Uh, once you uh, destroy this uh, source or discard it or get new clean source or make a cleaning for this uh, 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 water tank or water source, you will get rid of the disease because the source is one. But here in the propagated, uh, the, the, the clear example that you remember is the COVID. Uh, VAB. Uh, each VAB patient uh, or each patient with a pneumonia uh, can infect other people, uh, family members, uh, friends, uh, or uh, uh, fellow patients in the same uh, unit, like same ICU. So they can infect other patient, and other patient can infect other patient, and so on. So it's called the propagated, and usually large in size. We usually stay for longer time than the common source. Uh, so the determining the epidemic pattern, as we said, it could be common source uh, or propagated. We just described the difference between two, the two. Uh, but a common source can be also divided into subtypes, point, continuous, and intermittent. And in the point, as we said, uh, it is a single event. So you have uh, a step up slope and a more gradual down slope. So you have one wave. It's called point exposure, common source. Uh, continuous exposure, you have uh, one wave, but this one wave have, has a plateau. Plateau means it extends over longer period of time, and common source is intermittent. A common source intermittent, you have irregular jagged curves, so you have multiple uh, curves. Propagated have also multiple curves, but multiple curves usually uh, progressively taller or or the peak is higher uh, until uh, it, it get at the end smaller and the outbreak ended. 
And in this slide, we give you uh, these different patterns described in the previous slide. So the common source, you have uh, uh, upward slope, downward slope. Usually downward slope takes more time, but it's a single wave, usually for a few days. Uh, in the common source, you have uh, more days and uh, up uh, slope, down slope, and there is a plateau. So it's not uh, a single point as we see here. It's uh, uh, several days of uh, similar level of the outbreak. This is called uh, common source uh, continuous exposure. For the common source intermittent, you have here separated waves. This is the point. You have multiple waves, and uh, the multiple waves are separated by free areas. So usually this is when there is uh, intermittent exposure, like you have a, a contaminated batch of uh, medication. Once you use the batch, uh, uh, the, 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 the cases start to appear. Uh, once uh, this is not used, the cases disappear and so on. So uh, the point is multiple waves and they are separated. In propagated, they are multiple waves, but they are uh, linked together. And usually uh, these waves increase in size. As you see, there is a wave here, bigger wave, uh, much bigger wave and highest bigger wave. And at the end, you will see uh, waves decreasing until you get uh, the end of the, uh, the outbreak. But uh, you cannot determine exactly uh, the, the waves, but generally it is multiple waves connected together uh, opposite to the common source intermittent. Thank you.